Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the White Tails Dynasty as we are well into season nine, eight, and zero, oh, and the number two team in the nation after winning last week in that mud game versus Iowa. We sit here, one of three undefeated teams. Now, Tennessee is undefeated. Look who they've defeated so far. Florida is really their toughest game to me. Houston is a pretty good team as well. They're top 25, but no real signature wins. I'm not sure they will actually finish the season undefeated. Right now, they look good, but I think they will actually lose one of these last games. So let's just look at the Big Ten standings. Army is on top of their side of the division, but like Tennessee, I don't think they're going to finish out with a uh, number one seed in the East. I think that they will lose. I think they could lose all four of their next four games. I mean, they have a tough schedule coming up. So let's just look at our recruiting board. Next episode, we will look at some of the recruits that have committed. But Jacobius Wilcutt is still at the top of our board. He is one of a dynamic, one of the dynamic receivers that we will be going after this year. Malik King, and he is the number one defensive end. We highlighted him last video. He is looking good so far. We are in first place. He has visited all of his schools he's interested in, and we are still there. Now, Charles Hines, for some reason, we always lose people to Wake Forest. Well, this guy, he could be a really good running back. Now, he would be a walk-on, so he will be renamed to one of you guys. But right now, it looks good for him. Now, Logan Ross, he is a really good tackle, a very good run blocker. And remember, next year, we will be changing playbooks. So we don't know what type of offense we will be running. So we will have to see what type of offense that will be. And having a guy that can run block at tackle will be useful. Russell Lloyd, another guard. I really like this kid, but he is undersized, which I am a little concerned about. And NCAA is weird like that sometimes. Sometimes size and you know weight does matter with a lot of players. Sometimes it doesn't. So I am kind of concerned with that. But Bryson Mitchell is a good middle linebacker. I really like his potential. He has really good tackling right now, 84. And matter of fact, I don't think he even has to start next year. I think he can have a good redshirt season to really get some exposure at the college level. Now, we are going up against Nebraska, and this is actually the battle for the division because I got to say the winner of this game will likely win our division, and looking at them, they are number 16 in the nation and have two losses, and they were very tough losses, so let's see. They're going to bring some toughness here in this game, so let's kick off this one. As we are at home, this is a doubleheader episode as we will go up against David Butler, a very good redshirt freshman. Now, we have played some really good young quarterbacks this year. I think David Butler might be the guy when it's all said and done that might be really, really good. And look at this. With all of his coaching upgrades that the coach has for Nebraska, that puts him at 87 overall. Then they have Kevin Smith at running back. Now, he has played all three years he has been eligible to play. He redshirted his first year, but this year he's finally in the starting role full time. He is fast, 95 speed, and with the coaching upgrades, he goes up to 90 overall and 97 speed. And then looking at the receivers, Thomas Hines is their top guy. He is a great route runner, has good hands. We have our work cut out here in this game. So here is Butler starting it out. He's going to hand it off to Smith, who throws off Tamari Jamison and gets down the right side, and he will pick up a gain of 20 on the first play. Oh, my goodness. I haven't seen Tamari Jamison get thrown off like that, and it's a first down. But draw a play on the next play, and there is a stop in the backfield. It is the All-American Adam Williams with the tackle in the backfield. And now that brings it to a five wide, third and long throw across the middle. It's Prince who does break a tackle and goes down short of the first down marker. Tamari Jamison gets his revenge and we do force a punt here on the first drive. So here's Colin Curse back onto the field. He's had a couple of splash games here in this season. And here he is on the first play trying to throw it away, but he can't get rid of it. I was trying to shield the tackle and get out of the pocket at the same time without getting a intentional grounding, but instead it's a sack. But now third and 28, backed up in our end zone, trying to get rid of the ball, and it's a sack. And that is two points for Nebraska. Todd Wade has two early sacks, and that one will put Nebraska on the board as they can't get anything going after the punt, so we get possession right back. 
So here we are back on offense. We're going to run Blake right in motion. He is a mobile receiver. Don't let that size fool you. Here he is with the handoff up the middle, and that's what I'm talking about. He can move at six foot four, 15 yards up the middle. It's a first down. So now first and 10, another handoff. Apollo St. Vincent, the junior running back, and he will pick up 12, and that one will put us across the 50-yard line for a first down. So now from about the 47-yard line from the shotgun, four wide receivers out there in the pocket. Deep throw. It's caught. Jasper Sweet is open. It's a touchdown, 48 yards. And that's what I'm talking about. Colin Kurtz, that's actually his first completion, one for six to start the game. But Jasper Sweet can open up a game at any time. 98 speed. I mean, he is the fastest whitetail we've ever had. Next year, he will be 99 speed. That's going to be fun. So here we are with a 7-2 lead. What a weird score. Here's a handoff up the middle, and Smith gets thrown back. And that is a gain of three yards. As now they get into an eventual third and five. We're going to send a blitz, but no, we'll change the play at the last second. Here's a screen pass out to left side. And that is Harrison O'Toole with the tackle. And that is only a gain of one. And there we go, another punt here for this Nebraska offense. So here comes Colin Kurtz leading this team back out onto the field. The true freshman gets swallowed up, and that is a big-time hit. Todd Wade, his third sack, just straight, lays out Colin Kurtz. And now third and 14. We knew Nebraska had a good defense, but they're showing it in this game. Deep shot. Bradbury goes up and gets it but can't hang on, and Colin Kurtz starts out this game one for seven, and his one completion is a touchdown. So back on an offense, here's Nebraska running the ball with Smith to the right side who breaks a tackle and does pick up a gain of two. As now that sets him up with a third and two, just out of field goal range. Let's see if we can stop him. Handoff, Smith does get stuffed and that is gonna be a combination of Will Copes, Tamari Jamison, and Denzel Graham Jr. What a nice play, Adam Williams was also in there and we get the stop. And now here we go back on an offense. Our defense once again is good this year, but a throw to the right side, and it's picked off. That time it's the nickel corner. It's Samuel who makes a good play on the ball. That was a tight window to throw to, and Delroy King's route wasn't sharp enough, and Colin Kirsch just throws him uh, open a little bit, but it's just a little bit underthrown, and it's picked off. And now here comes Nebraska back on the field. The first throw to the right side, and it's Jacob Cabral on that one. Gain of five yards on the sideline. And now there's about four minutes left here in the first half. Let's see if Nebraska can score. Here, second and seven. Butler tries to scramble out. We know he's got 87 speed at quarterback, and he slides forward for a gain of four, and that brings it to a third and three. Butler tries to scramble again. Gets tripped up by Harrison O'Toole from behind. Nice tackle by the true freshman. And we do get them to settle for the field goal, so another weird score, five to seven here. And now here we come back on offense. Three minutes left here in this first half, and there is a sack. Nebraska's defensive line is lethal, and that's the reason why they're ranked in the top 25. And now that brings them to a third and 17. Kurtz from the shotgun, great protection this time. Airing it out, he's got Sweet again. He gets behind the defense, nobody's catching him. It's a touchdown, 82 yards, Jasper Sweets. Second touchdown of the game. Only Colin Kurtz's second completion. Two for 10, two touchdowns. I mean, you can't make this up. The White Tails take the 14 to five lead here. Can Nebraska answer? So now they come back out onto the field. Butler run the ball with Smith, but not this time. It is Adam Williams in the backfield, loss of three yards. And that brings it to a third and 11, just before halftime. Another screen pass, Smith gets upfield. We take out the blocker, allowing the other guys to come up and make the stop. And it is a stop that time by Charles Davis. And now we get the ball back before halftime. So 55 seconds left here in the first half. Throw to left side. It's Bradbury who breaks the tackle. He gets down the field. He doesn't have the elite speed, but he does get way downfield. That's about a gain of 40-something yards on that one. And a first down as we get the ball to about the 29. Running the option this time to left side. We try to pitch it out to Blake Wright, but that's a tackle in the backfield. Loss of two yards. And now that brings it to a third and 12. 20 seconds left here, play action fake. Rolled out to the right side, the pressure is right there. Kurtz just throws it up for grabs and that is incomplete. And we will settle for the field goal to make it 
a 17-5 game. Believe it or not, Alex Kagan has never missed a field goal in his career, but that's how we go into halftime. So now we start off the second half with the handoff to left side. And it's Apollo St. Vincent. He coughs it up. And Nebraska's defensive line is keeping them in this game. If it wasn't for the sacks, if it wasn't for this hit here, I mean, this team would probably be losing by a lot more. The reason why we're having so many errant throws and incompletions is because the pressure is right there every play. So here comes Nebraska back out onto the field. Kevin Smith. Look at that, 22 carries for 74 yards. We are shutting down the run. Here's another carry up the middle, but he's got a gain of seven inside the five on that carry. And now that brings it to a second and three, running the tight end in motion. Butler, he's gonna throw to the right side. It's picked off that time. It's Charles Davis. He has one in this game, and that is gonna be a big one. And wow, look at this. I mean, he just read that route and jumped it. I mean, that was textbook cornerback man-to-man -man coverage I mean that receiver ran a terrible slant route on that one too but Charles Davis did his job so here we are back on offense Bradbury gets the first pass of the next drive gain of 10 yards and a first down so now this third quarter does wind down here play action fake they only rush three on this play great protection we're just going to air it out deep to Michael Bradbury and it is under thrown Kilpatrick just goes up and gets it it's an interception in the third turnover of the game. Colin Kurtz has thrown two interceptions in this one. And now that keeps Nebraska in the game. So here comes this offense back out onto the field. They have not been able to do anything in this game. Butler from the shotgun. He's facing pressure, and he's going to go down. That time it's Cameron St. Clair. We have too many uh, guys in the 40s here in our defensive backfield. We need to change their number for sure. I'm going to do that probably uh, before probably the end of the season. I'll probably change their number, get them switched up because I got to say, we got too many white guys in the 40s with the uh, at defensive back right now. It's kind of confusing because Will Copes is there, 41. We have uh, Charles Davis. Actually, Will Copes is 40. Charles Davis is 41. And then Cameron St. Clair is actually 48. We need to change that up. So if you guys are one of those guys, let me know what number you want and we can get that arranged. So here's a throw on a third and eight across the middle, and it's going to be caught by Morgan Williams, 17 yards and a first down. And now we're set up inside the 10, third and seven here. Let's see what Kurtz can do. Scramming out to the right, and he's going to throw the ball away. Not a very good game by Colin Kurtz, but enough to get the job done as here comes Nebraska. 50 seconds left here in this game, and let's see if they can do anything. Butler from the shotgun. He's going to buy some time throw to the right side. It's picked off. Charles Davis, his second of the game, and that is going to do it here. His, his best performance so far, two interceptions on David Butler. He only had 58 yards passing in this one. I mean, this is just dominant football. We are killing the Big Ten right now, and right now Iowa was probably the closest, and Michigan had a pretty good uh, game as well. I mean, those two games were really good, but besides that, I mean, nobody is really competing with us this season, especially when Colin Kurtz is rolling. If I can get him rolling in a game and he's having a really good freshman season, he's unstoppable. And then Jasper Sweet, don't let him get loose. Two receptions, two touchdowns, 130 yards. That is just crazy. And then on the defensive side of the ball, Cameron St. Clair gets a sack. Harrison O'Toole had a good game. Tom Tavari Jamison had a sack as well. And then, of course, Charles Davis. To me, he gets the player of the game because we haven't had a real two-interception game from a player yet. And I think that this guy showed up and showed out and shut down a top 25 school throwing the ball. So now we get into the second game of this doubleheader, and this one is kind of less appealing. Minnesota is 3-6 and six on the year, 1-5 in conference. They just actually got demoted or promoted from the American Athletic, and now they're back in the Big Ten. But you guys have been asking about Ramel Williams. He has been hurt lately, and he's missed the last two games with a hurt shoulder. So he will actually miss this game as well. I'm going to keep him out. I don't want to risk any further injury, so I'm going to keep him out for this game. So here we are in the second doubleheader, and we're placing Minnesota on the road at TCF Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. And here is the first carry of the game up the middle, and that's Apollo. He's got 12 yards, 
and a first down. That's actually his third carry. And now we get the ball across the 50-yard line to about the 35. Handoff, Apollo up the middle, and he gets thrown forward for a gain of eight and a first down, or almost a first down. And that brings it to a second and two this time. Apollo back in the backfield. They're going to send a blitz to the right side, and that is going to be caught by Michael Bradbury on the outside. Another first down is now we get up set up inside the five. Here's a broken play, but Kurtz tries to take it himself, and he gets tattooed on that one, loss of three yards, and that brings it to a third and goal. A snap from the shotgun. Apollo tries to fight forward and does not get there. Gain of nothing. Fourth and goal. We've had it at the one-yard line for three straight plays. We still can't punch it in. Hand up. Apollo is finally in, and that is a touchdown, and Wisconsin State will take the seven-point lead in this one as now we get possession right back, and Minnesota does score on their opening drive as well, so here we go. Julian Gonzalez, handoff up the middle, and that is a gain of 13 for the senior. And now... That brings it to a third and three. Now across the 50, throw to the right side. It's Julian again. He's got it out of the backfield. I love to get Julian Gonzalez some work. He's a senior. He's a veteran. Well, he did have a chance to start once upon a time, and he kind of has had his, his moments, and he's been great, but I really like the dual back system with him and Apollo St. Vincent. I think they work well as a one-two punch as Respect does get the catch across the middle. Now we're inside the 20. Now here is Kurtz here from the shotgun. He's going to scramble out to the right side. A defender closing. He's going to spin forward and get tackled at about the nine-yard line, gain of eight. And that brings it to a third in inches this time. Clean pocket. Throw across the middle, and it's Bradbury who goes up and gets it. How did we not get the touchdown on that one? And now we get it to a first and goal. We're just going to give it right back to him. Why not reward him? And there he is. Touchdown. Man, I got to admit, this team is fun to play with now, a whole lot of fun. And you can just see, like, just how dynamic we are. Bradbury does his thing. He's not even the fastest guy on the team, but he does a whole lot in this receiving game. And Blake Wright is his own 6'4 target of himself. And then Jasper Sweet in the slot. He's got 98 speed. I mean, it's just so many weapons. And then we have Delroy King who is also a big game breaker. He is on the field at any time as well. He's a threat to score. As we're back on an offense, as Minnesota does settle for the three points on that drive. And look at Michael Bradbury. He runs some great routes as well. That should never be understated. And it's a first down. So two minutes left here. Here's Colin Kurtz. He's going to take it himself up the middle. And he does fumble it. And Simpson falls on it. And we're just going to avoid getting some points on that one as Kurtz coughs it up. And now here comes Minnesota back out onto the field. So remember, this is only a one-win team in conference. They are staying in this game. And here's the throw out to the left side, and that's caught by Brigham. And that's going to bring it to a third and three, close to the 50. Marshall throws incomplete as they tried to run a little bit of a mesh slant combination, and it ends up being incomplete. And now here we are at the end of the first half. A minute left. Colin Kurtz backed up. He's got about 90 yards to go on this drive. It's a first down on that scramble. So first and 10, we hurried up to the line. This time, Kurtz, good protection. In the pocket, throws. Jasper Sweet gets open up the seam. It's a catch, and he gets hit hard right after. It's a first down, his third of the day. So now this clock does continue to run here. From the pistol formation, Apollo behind Kurtz. He's going to have time. Unload, go deep, one-on-one. -on -one. Bradbury, who goes up and gets it, 46 yards. And I love Michael Bradbury, what he can do, six receptions, 99 yards here in the first half. As now we get the ball inside the five, handoff. Apollo's in, two yards out. It's a touchdown, 21 to 10 here going into halftime. And there we go. Our team is just rolling as now here comes Minnesota to start the second half. Let's see if they have anything left in them as here they run the slant to the left side, throw. It's caught by Sewell, their best receiver. And he picks up about a gain of 14 and a first down. So now they get it across the 50 here, third and four, handoff. O'Donnell, their running back, breaks a tackle, and he breaks free. Barry Willis can't take him down, and then it's going to be a touchdown, 42 yards. And Minnesota quietly staying in this game, and now it's just a four-point lead. 
So here we are back on offense. Here's Kylan Kurtz throw across the middle. It's caught. Delroy King in the game. He gets a big gain of 36 on that one. And that's a first down. As now Kylan Kurtz, 18 of 24. You can see the difference Nebraska made on this passing offense. And here's another pass to the right side. It's Jasper Sweet. Gain of 14 yards. Another first down catch. And now we get it to a first and goal. Handoff. Julian Gonzalez, the senior, checks in. He gets five yards. And he gets us to about the three here, set up for a third and goal as we can't get there on second down after losing a couple yards. Kurtz scrambles to the right side. He's got an open lane, and he will take it in. And this time he won't fumble. It's a touchdown, six yards out. And Colin Kurtz gives us at least a two-score lead. As now Minnesota answers back with a field goal as we trade field goals is now 28-20. to 20. Throw to the right side. Colin Kurtz is picked off. James, he's going to take it back to about the 32, and that's not what we wanted. And here we go. Now Minnesota has a chance to tie this game up. So now they're set up with a great field position. Odomo tries to get around Mar Maverick Yarbrough. Look at that. Almost called him Marlon Yarbrough. And now that brings it to a third and eight. This time, Marshall from the pocket gets swallowed up, and that is going to be a really old villain. Also there, Anderson Reed. And now we get the sack, and we take the five-point lead, but we do trade field goals again now, 31-23. to 23. One more score, you got to say, is probably in the books. Now we're into the fourth quarter. There is Respect, who's filling in for Ramel Williams with a big catch and run. So handoff this time, Apollo St. Vincent trucks a defender, gets tackled from behind. That's going to be a gain of eight. And now third and two. Two running backs in the backfield. We're going to hand off to Apollo again, who just barely gets enough. Three yards, and it's a first down. As now we're set up at about the 12-yard line. So here we are, two running backs in the backfield once again. Play action fake, throw across the middle. It's Jasper Sweet, who breaks the tackle and gets in. Touchdown, three touchdowns for him in two games. And that one will probably settle it here as we go on to win this game on the road versus a Minnesota team who really has been struggling since getting promoted back to the Big Ten. And this was a very good game by our uh, receiving core for sure. They were getting open. Kylan Kurtz finished 23 of 37. He kind of went cold there in the second half, but it still was enough as we win this game. And we win 45 to 31, ends up being the final score. Apollo runs for over 100 yards, two touchdowns for him. And just like a great victory. I mean, these are the type of games where you just want to take care of business, want to make sure you don't get upset. And especially with these sliders and just how I play the game, you could get upset at any time. And then just looking at the defensive stats, Adam Williams actually had an interception in this game. Aurelio Villain and Frankie Kai had sacks. And just an overall great season by our defense. We did give up 31 to a bad Minnesota team, but it's okay. We still got the victory. So the last two games of the season, Wisconsin and NIU. Wisconsin was in the national championship last year. They have definitely fallen off the map. They are 5-5, five and five, not having the season that they thought they would have. And then NIU is struggling in their second year in the Big Ten. Hopefully they don't get demoted because I promoted them uh, last year and they had a good first season. Let's see if they can clean it up. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. Yeah, hey, filling out these job applications. Life got hard after high school graduation. I went to college and your boy got financial aid. They gave me money, then I went and bought a pair of J's. And I bought a pair of shades. And I bought a new computer. Half a hundred dollars left. Spent the rest on.